Buckle up, bitches. Hey, you're listening to the Drunk Sports Podcast with Big Red and IndyCar Tim. Talking sports, current events, guy stuff, and everything in between. Now, open up a cold one and drink along, because here they are, Lance and Tim. You can buy me a drink. (laughs) We're all drunk. Absolutely. Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome once again to the Drunk Sports Podcast. I am Indy Car Tim, along with my favorite partner in the whole world. I am uh, white trash, Big Red, today, baby. You're so white trash, I'm giving this to you. Give it to me, Lance. Give it to me, Lance. Push, push. Give it to me, Lance. Big Red. Big Red. Yes, sir. And we are live from White Trash Bash 2019 in Woo! South Paloma. Let's hear Creek. it, baby. Yeah. There is so much white trash going on right now that I, I got so many damn baby mamas out here right now. You got babe, you got I dude, I'm not even gonna go but there. She's side eyeing you and she's carrying somebody else's right now. Oh <laughs> how many people here have impregnated Lance's wife at least once? Would you? I see 15 hands outside the garage Holy right now. Holy hell. Wow. We're out here having a good time. If you're not here, you're missing it, but we appreciate you jumping on with us. Uh, so uh, to get everything out of the way, hello to our drunk dudes and dolls and our drunk sports pod tards. We are live on Facebook, live on YouTube. Uh, we would like to hear from you. Marky Mark in we the would... house, baby. It's birthday boy. <laughs> birthday boy's here. Right here Mark behind Mark is us. here. Right here, baby. And he is hiding. <laughs> Oh, no, no, he's not. Away. <laughs> Happy birthday, brother. Thanks for having us out tonight, man. We're having a good time. We've been here for a few hours, and we've been what we call on the show priming. Uh, prepping. It's just show prep. We're prepping. We're priming. Uh, we're drinking. show prep. And that's really the whole concept here behind the Drunk Sports Podcast. Uh, we got a big show ahead of us. We'd like to hear everybody's comments on Facebook and on YouTube if you're watching live. If you're not, uh, if you're listening to the recorded podcast, feel free to shoot us a tweet. We are on the Twitter. Uh, I am at IndyCar Tim. He is at Drunk Big Red. As always. Our show Twitter is at Drunk Sports DFW. We would like you to visit our website, thedrunksportspodcast.com. Uh, and if you're watching live and you want to know where you can hear us, you can hear us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Stitcher, Radio Public, iHeartRadio, and we are now on the radio.com app. Uh, and that's my favorite because you know why that's my favorite? Why well, is that your favorite? Because you can hear 105.3, the fan, and you can tolo all day. The fan. That's what I'm talking about. This episode, as always, is brought to you by the Highlands Performance Golf Center at 2538 Golden Bear Drive in Carrollton, 75006. Uh, phone number there is 972-733-4111. And their new website, Get Highlands PGC. Dot com. Dot com. If you are a golfer, if you call yourself a golfer and you have not visited the Highlands Performance Golf Center, you are doing yourself a disservice, sir. You go check those boys out, man. Uh, they've got uh, club fitting. They've got uh, junior training. They've got dude kids as young as five years old that they can go out and, and train. Yep. If you think you if you think you're ready for the tour, no. they can still help you. No. Um, well, yeah, but, yes, th- they can help you. Yeah, but and they, they have a badass little putt-putt course out there, too, man, that's pretty cool. We, we do need to have a white – maybe we need to have a white trash bash out there and take over the miniature golf course. Let's do it. Have, have, a, have a white trash Let's do it, man. putt-putt golf. I'm tournament. ready. We'll head out there. So go say hello to our friends at the Highlands Performance Golf Center. Uh, if you need lessons, you think you need to get your golf game where you want it to be, you talk to our buddy, Mr. John Gerber. JGZ, baby. Uh, and, of course, he comes on with us every week or every golf show to talk about yep. his picks, and we're yep. going to get into the – He's a little under the weather on – Little uh, British Open picks. On, on Wednesday, but – Is uh, he feeling better? Yes, yeah. He's, we're a few days removed away yeah, he's, from that. He's, so. he's coming back. He's coming back strong. I've been out there two or three times this week, and uh, Johnny's helping me with my game and, and getting me going and – we're making some big changes. One of these days, and, I'll play golf again. And you know what? You got no prayer anymore. None. I'll kick your ass like I do all the None. time. Well, I ain't scared of you. Well, shit. Buckle I ain't up. Scared of you. Buckle up, little buddy. We also have an additional sponsor this week. We want to say hello to our good buddies that are out here right now serving everybody pizza. The General Pizza Company, baby, man. They're on on site. They are pumping out some badass damn pizza. Dude, they've pizza. got these two badass little. 
I guess they're propane powered pizza ovens out there on the street. Yeah, one of them's wood fired, one of them's propane. Dude. They are pimping that shit out bad ass. What? Oh, Uni Ovens, O O N I, right? Uni, Uni ovens. ovens from General Pizza Company, I don't know, man. man. They're badass, though. Yeah, it's my bud. It, it's my buddy, my neighbor, Doug Rodriguez, and his brother. They're they're pushing that stuff out, and it's uh, it's awesome. So they are serving us tonight. We've got three pizzas that they're, or is it four? There's, I see three on our there's, list. There's, there's four. There's, there's four. There's, oh, there's, there's four. There's uh, one with red sauce and one, and one, or, one three with, with no red, red sauce. One with, don't move it. I got it. I'm focusing my bionic eyes. Uh, the Rita, which is French mozzarella. It's a six. This is a six dollar man over here. San Marzano <laughs> t- tomatoes, basil, Parmigiana Reggiano, and E V O O. Did I say that right? Extra virgin I know what olive you, oil. What was that chick's name that coined that phrase? Rachel Ray, that bitch, started calling <laughs> it E V O O. Perky little haircut. I hate her guts. Uh, we have the spicy pep, which is fresh mozzarella. She is cute, though. God, well, this word keeps coming back. San, San Marzano, Marzano tomatoes, San Marzano pe- uh, pepperoni, tomatoes. basil, yeah. Mike's hot honey. Uh, what? Why ain't, what, right? why, why ain't they got Big Red's barbecue sauce out and there or the something? And the Parmigiano Reg. I'm butchering <laughs> this, aren't I? Parmigiano <laughs> Reggiano. But they need to have some sultans out there. Uh, and EVOO. To, to drag over the we top of We have the them. plain but not lame Roni. Fresh mozzarella, the tomato thing again, pepperoni, oregano, basil, the Parmigiano Reggiano thing, and E V O O. I'm not as cute when I say it as she is. No, you're not at all. Evu. And then our no red sauce pizza, the Texas. Fresh mozzarella, barbecue sauce, red onions, chicken crocked black pepper. Damn. And E V O O. So we're going to enjoy some of that when we're done with the show. I can't wait because that shit sounds amazing, dude. While you were fretting over all this, I went and stole me a piece. I'm sure you did. Uh, so you can follow no, them on and I the talk, Instagram. I wasn't talking about my wife either. Nah. It's a piece of pizza. Well, my wife's not here. Well, so <laughs> Where the hell is she? Follow them on the Instagram. <laughs> Where's at our producer? General Pizza Co. G-E-N-E-R-A-L-P-I-Z-Z-A-C-O on the Instagram. Go give them a follow. And we'll talk about more, more about them a General Pizza bit later. Co. That's what I said. I just, I just saying a little faster. Is there an echo? Hello. Echo. Big red. Big red. Oh. So we got a big show. We've got apologies and corrections. We've got hugs and high fives. We've got this week in Texas Rangers, and dude, things are not looking good for our Texas Rangers right now. Bet we don't make some. Bet we don't become sellers. No. Bet we don't become sellers. You don't. We're. We're going to be sellers. Oh, yeah. No, we, we are, for sure. I mean, we're going to be um, seller drillers, so we might as well be sellers. We've got short shots, and we're going to talk about, I don't know if you knew or not, the 17th last week was National Hot Dog Day. We're going to talk some top ten hot dog toppings for National Hot Dog Day earlier, earlier in the week. How many hot dogs can I've you I've got eat a surprise in segment. In, how many can I eat? In t- oh, I don't even want to know. Don't even talk to me about what's happening on the screen right now. <sighs> uh, I've got a surprise segment for Lance that I did not – talk to him about, and he's going to flip a lid when he hears this. Uh, we're also going to talk about the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame announced their speech order and the presenters for the inductees. We're going to go over that pretty quick. And I got something for you that I haven't talked to And then Zach's about. got a very special list for us. Is that Zach, what you're talking about? Zach, I am not Zach. I am not your oldest. I say Zach. Yes, you did. You did. He I said Zach? Did, did he, um, said, he, he said Zach, right? So it, We're all drunk. Yeah. What, Tim, Sorry. Okay. My bad. Whew. I might need my ponytail holder back um, in. Today, of course, is the 50th anniversary of the alleged moon landing. Did Dude. we or didn't we? Don't don't even go there. No, I know we did. Okay. But there's people who don't think we did. There's people. There's still people. We on got this. a little tribute to Buzz Aldrin. Dude, there are still people on this planet that think this shit is flat. Um, dude, living near Denton, we see that shit all the time. What a bunch of idiots. No. I'm sorry if any of y'all think we live on a flat <laughs> earth. My apologies. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, would you hope know what happened the last time you and I were in Denton together? Yeah, we almost got killed. No, we almost the body count almost got exacerbated. Yes, it was not fun uh, for National Pride Month or week or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> we didn't have to tell what it was. Nah, that's what it was, and we almost killed a lot of people. Uh, apologies and corrections. Oh, you want to do the absolutely count to see how many Jello shots everybody? How has many to take? Jello shots do all y'all want to do? Because we're fixing to do an absolutely count, and the and the rule is is every time I say absolutely on this show, you must do a Last shot. Show. Well, this show too, but we're gonna catch yeah, up. Well, you gotta do you gotta do them while we're here. 
You got to do them while we're here. Every so time, La- every time I say absolutely, that's twice. I've already said it. Is absolutely. Every time I say it, you have to do a shot. So we have a show drinking game that whenever Lance says the word. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to take a shot or a drink or whatever because we learned very early on that Lance's crutch word is absolutely. He says absolutely. it a lot. So get ready to drink because that's the way it works. Um, so we always do a recount from the episode before, and we did. You had a good week because it was a golf episode. Well, yeah, I was talking about So you about only something. said it ten times. Just ten? Just ten. So everybody that's here has to do ten shots to get caught up with us mm. from last week. And then starting. So I look oh, like. Oh, she did three. We're good. I look, I look like. Brooke. Of what? What were you doing shots of? <laughs> Ooh. Chill. Uh-oh. Ooh. So, so, so Western I look like Sun was it Western Sun? I look like Brooke, I look like Brooke running down the, down the beach. You don't look like Brooke Shields. No, no, or <laughs> or not Brooke Shields. No, it's not Brooke Shields. You said Brooke. No, who, who am I talking about? Bo, Bo, Bo Derek, Bo Derek, Bo Derek. There we go. God, he messed me up there for a second. <laughs> uh, so yes, we've got a fun show. We hope everybody here is going to have a good time with us and drink with us plenty. Uh, apologies and corrections. Why don't we start the shows off with? I have two apologies. Um, the first one is for the video feed last week. I apologize that technology won once again. And we may be apologizing for the video my feed bad. again this week. We've given up on our, our OBS software. We give Appreciate up. you, my brother. It doesn't work. We can't do Dougie it. Dougie Fresh in the house. Dougie Fresh in the house. The and, birthday boy. And the Mark birthday boy. The and the birthday boy. <sighs> we will sing happy birthday. Yes, there will be happy birthday before the night is done. Um... So the second thing I have to apologize for is if you listen to the golf episode, the British Open, 2019 British Open preview show that we did Wednesday night, live from Studio 69 at Costa Not So Grande, right down the street. Um, so this is like Studio we were, 74. Is it? But be like Studio However many houses 77 down it is. or something. Yeah. All right. We'll call it Studio 77 at Mark's house. Um, so we were talking golf. We did Mr. Gerber's picks, which we will get into Mr. Gerber's picks and how they are performing so far. Um, but, of course, I threw out some picks. But I didn't like one of the picks Gerb, Gerb gave us in the name of Patrick Reed. We made a show bet, and I believe I told Lance, I told Big Red over here that Patrick Reed would not make the cut. Wrong. I said he would miss the cut. We bet 25 bottle caps because gambling money is illegal. We bet 25 bottle caps. And where is Mr. Reed in the the chase right now? He did not miss the cut. (laughs) Uh, As a matter of fact, (laughs) after three rounds, after today, he is tied for 19th at minus four. (sighs) Four under. He's performing well. We are going uh, to get into our picks, especially my picks, Gerb's picks, a little bit later in the show. I had a little buddy in Vegas this weekend. You did not perform well either, from what I understand. I I sent him some money on on some day bets. And the three bets that I put in all went tits up. I bet against Mr. Spieth, who decided to play today. And then I uh, also bet against. Yeah, he kind of had a comeback, didn't he? I also bet against Mr. Lowry, the Irishman, who uh, set a course record he's, today. He's leading. Set a course record, now leading yep. by four strokes. And uh, also uh, went with uh, Lee Westwood over. Uh, the big hair dude, Tommy Fleetwood. Tommy Fleetwood. And uh, Tommy Fleetwood kept his ass. I like too. that band that he started back in the late 60s. That's Fleetwood Mac? He's a really good drummer. I don't know why he's playing golf. He's kind of old to be playing golf. Well, he's not really that old, and that's the wrong dude, and you're wrong. Oh, Tommy Fleetwood is not Tommy Fleetwood, Fleetwood and no, Fleetwood Mac? It's not, no, it's not Fleetwood Mac. My bad. I stand corrected. Um, corrections. Um, the cor- one of the corrections I have uh, are the my other pick that I had, Mr. Adam Scott, was my pick to win the tournament. And guess what? Adam needs a show hug because he missed the cut. He shit the bed. Tied for 128th after Friday at seven over par. But somebody else that you did mention is performing He is quite doing well. fine in the name of Graham McDowell. And, and, there's was another tied one. for 29th at minus two at 200. The, the one that I'm speaking of. John Daly? Webb Simpson. No, John Daly didn't even play, dummy. Damn it. i got to talk to him about playing more tournaments, man. Well, yes, Webb Simpson, one of the names I threw out there. Yep, you did. He's you did. doing well. Yep, yeah, he's, he's, he's playing okay. I don't have his numbers right now in front of me, but he didn't make the cut. And uh, 
He he's is, up there on the leaderboard. He's he's doing his thing. He does have a lot of kids. He he may have as many baby mamas as I do right now. Bell. No, not baby mamas. I mean babies. 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 He doesn't have as many as me. No, you got to look them. I got six that I know of. So you're pushing the football team. And there's, there's yeah, plus an alternate. But none of your kids are big enough to be offensive I got a linemen. hockey team. None of your kids hey, are. out of my six kids, who would you have in goal on a hockey team? We got our three forwards. In uh, so in probably Ryder Parker and Eli would be the f- no you know what Eli, I got it Eli would be in goal Eli Eli is our goalie that dude's got a temper man yep yep and uh, and Zach is our center because he's limber and lean yep and, and fast pretty fast and yep. fast Tiffany and Parker Parker I got four boys and two girls and out of all of them my second oldest girl who is seventeen now sixteen God don't make her seventeen yet. Uh, is my best athlete by far. Lucian, out of every fucking body, she's the best athlete by far. No, yet, yeah. She's playing AAU basketball. She's on varsity at Braswell up here. She's a badass. She is. Uh, unfortunately, she won't be able to play in the NBA. She's gonna have to go to the WNBA, and they get paid shit. So speaking I'm, of speaking of a, another another big fan of ours, Jeff Brown, his son uh, his son Austin was playing in a in a basketball game today. Jeb texted me and said that Austin had 11 points in the first five minutes of the game, and he was smoking. So I have no idea what. Wait, he was smoking on the court. Did they allow that? I mean, he was he, he was hot, he was like hot. pot. No, come on. Oh, he's playing well. Yes, he's playing Damn well. Damn it! I don't get your references sometimes. Idiot. Absolutely. We're all drunk. Hey, hey, you know what I got to say about that? Give it to me, Lance. Give it to me, Lance. Push, push. Give it to me, Lance. Dude, I can dance. I just realized that. Uh, Damn it, Gina. Uh, wrong again. Hugs and high fives. We don't have a lot, but we have some good ones. So hugs and high fives for everybody not familiar. Uh, hugs are for people that are doing stupid shit in the world. High fives are pe- for people that are doing cool shit in the world. Um, and it's hit or miss. I believe it's a hit this week. Um, Lance, are you a fan of Jim Harbaugh? Jim Harbaugh, the uh, khaki wearing black Coach khaki. glasses. Yeah, Michigan. The little, doesn't he have like the little thing hanging down around his neck, the marker or whatever yeah, for his playbook? Yeah, and, I mean, he's a decent quarterback. He's kind of an idiot, though, right? Yeah, a little Played bit. for Chicago, a played for Indianapolis, backed up Mike Tomzak Tom back Zach. in the day. Really? Uh, he was Tom Zach. the last starting quarterback before Peyton Manning for Indianapolis. Backed, I could have backed up Tom Zach. I bet you would have, too. Oh, that's not what you were talking about, was it? My bad. Man, Apologies. Apologies. That shit ain't funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, headline, Michigan. Of course, he is the head coach of Michigan. Big Blue. Dateline, Michigan. Oh, wait, there's an Ohio State fan here, isn't there? Somewhere. And I'm talking about Michigan. Who oh, is shit. the Ohio State? Fuck out. Is there a Buckeye fan here? I could be wrong. There good. was. All right, there good. Was, somebody asked if we were Ohio State fans. Who was that? I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. It wasn't me. I don't, I don't see her because I got this light shining me in the damn eye. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> Blinded by the light. Blinded so by Michigan's the light. So Michigan's Jim Harbaugh. But you're a college football fan for Wrapped sure. Wrapped up like a deuce. No All right. In the night. All right, Bruce Springsteen. Uh, Jim Harbaugh announced for this upcoming season, Michigan quarterbacks, Shea Patterson and Dylan McCaffrey would split time. He's got an incumbent senior quarterback. Um, and then he's got a badass quarterback in the up and coming in Dylan McCaffrey. And he can't pick one. So guess what he's going to do? Any relation? To Ed? Ed? Or, well, I mean, if he's in relation to Ed McCaffrey. Christian? He, he's related to Christian. Are they related? Oh, no, I know. I'm just kidding. Um, I hate both of them, by the way. They're both pieces of shit. So he can't decide on a quarterback, so he's going to pick both of them. And this gives me memories of the late 70s Cowboys, mid-70s Cowboys. Do you remember when Tom Landry used to alternate plays between Craig Morton and Roger Staubach? Literally every play they would alternate. He, he would give the play to Morton. He would run in and release Staubach. The next play, he'd give it to Staubach. He'd run in and relieve Morton. Probably it was a fucking disaster. Probably the greatest mistake that Mr. Landry Maybe the made. only mistake Tom Landry ever made. Um, so, Mr. Harbaugh, you are a fucking idiot, and you need a hug. 
We're all drunk. High five time. Show high five to the not suspended Tyreek Hill of the Kansas City Chiefs. How the hell did he get away with that shit? I have inside information on that. We're going to get to it. Well, get to it. I'm here. I'm because waiting. he didn't do anything. That's why. That's my inside Bullshit. information. Bullshit. Somebody broke the kid's arm. The NFL announced Friday it would not suspend Tyreek Hill, and he did not violate the league's personal conduct policy and therefore will not be suspended. Adrian Peterson lost time by whipping his kid like my grandmother used to whip my ass with a switch. He lost, he, what, lost a year? Uh, do you want to know the difference? What? The it's, difference is. Tyreek Hill broke his son's arm. There was ar- no video. Tyreek Hill broke his son's or arm. audio evidence and of Adrian Peterson doing what he did. Adrian Peterson it whipped his he kid. It was he said, she said. It's the same shit. This, there was video and audio evidence of what occurred. And Roger Goodell chose not even to formally, personally interview Tyreek Hill. He did not even make him fly to New York and come to the office and dress up and go through the dog and pony show. So why the hell did Zeke? Why the hell did Zeke do it? Because he's a cowboy. He's a cowboy. Roger Goodell hates the Cowboys. It's a well-known fact. Well, not not sure if you're aware of that. Roger Goodell hates Jerry Jones. Well, and so he hates the Cowboys. If Tyree Kill plays he's for the probably, Cowboys right now, Tyree secretly, Kill would be suspended. He's probably secretly a Cowboy fan, but he hates Jerry Jones. If Tyree Kill played for the Cowboys right Who's now, he's not a Cowboy fan. He would be suspended. You're not Man. a Cowboy fan. You can leave it anytime. What? You? Yeah, Who's the hey, team of hey, choice? Hey, Who's hey, the team of choice? Hey, New Orleans Saint, New Orleans Saints fans are are, are available to leave it anytime. Oh, God, oh. he's a Raiders fan. Oh God. Hey, hey, hey. Let me tell you this. Guess what kind of shit show your team's going to be this year? Wait. We're all drunk. Buckle up, little buddy. It's going to be a shit show th- this year. Are you a John Gruden fan? So you're glad he's back. You're glad he signed a 10-year contract for a bazillion dollars. 10-year, yeah. And you're glad that he's trading every single good player on the team for draft picks. Hey, you know what? I'm, <laughs> I'm glad he traded them, too, because I got one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy with that trade. Even so though Tyree we may not have a quarterback that's throwing the ball, Kill will but we got a receiver. Chiefs training camp, and unless new evidence comes up, he will not be suspended. Missed. Fuck. Uh, hey, and a high five. I don't know if you heard about this or not, because this was fucking funny. Um, high five to Blue Jays catcher Danny Jansen, who sacrificed his mustache mid-game for an RBI single. Don't know if you guys heard about this. Danny Jansen was missing out on the offensive fun that his teammates were having on Friday as the Blue Jays were demolishing the Tigers. His team had gotten up 9 to nothing in the top of the sixth, but Jansen was 0 for 3 from the plate. In order to increase the chances of on-field success, he did what any superstitious athlete would do. He went in and shaved his mustache. So if you went to the bar, and even if your wife was there, and you knew There's you... There's a good chance she's at the bar right now. You weren't going to get any. Would you shave a gash out of your beard to make sure that you got some? Was I 0 for 3 against the Tigers so far in the 6th? I mean, if, if you're at... Then I might. A, dude, if you're at 52 and you're, and you're 0 for 3, then... Absolutely. <laughs> if you're... Yeah. yeah if you're... If you're at 52 and you're 0 for 3, then you're on a bad streak, son. So in his following at bat after he shaved his mustache, he smacked an RBI single in the left field and scored two runs. The mustache was the culprit. Somebody hey, somebody, bring me a trimmer. Let's, 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 let's trim this mustache. I'm not 0 for 3 right now. <laughs> so high five to Danny Jansen. That's pretty badass, You have far man. too many kids to be 0 for anything. Hey, we need to give a high five to our buddy, friend of the show, Mr. Buzz Aldrin. Yes, sir. One um, small step for a man, one giant leap. This for isn't mankind. recent, but That's because this Aldrin, is the 50th though, you know anniversary of the s- second man to walk on the moon, Buzz Aldrin. Um, uh, this is the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, and yes, it did happen. It was not on a sound stage. Um, but I don't know if you remember this in 2002. Yes. Did you, did you remember that in 2002 he punched a dude for calling the moon landing fake? He deserved it. You know how many people um, I wanted to throat punch today while I was at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, and everybody. Academy? You always want to punch everybody. And then, and then coming home, I got on to 380, 
and it was it looked like it was a parking lot a Wednesday morning at 8:30 it was it was stupid so a poll conducted on behalf of C-SPAN in June 2019 revealed 6% of Americans believe the moon landing was staged. And 15% on top of that said they didn't really know if it was staged or fake. So we have 21% of the American population Either don't think or aren't sure if the moon landing was real. And how many th- now? If you if you retook that with all the millennials that are around, the hell? Well, this was June of 2019. This was last month. Oh man, Come idiots! On. God, I have disappeared. So show high five, show high five to Mr. Buzz Aldrin, an American hero, yes the sir, second man to land on the moon. Here's quite buzz. possibly my that, real father. That was the weakest fucking throw I've ever seen. Pretty sure my mom did Buzz Aldrin. Did I ever tell you that story? No. Don't tell my dad. No. Well, he's <laughs> passed anyway. He's, so. he's hearing it now. Anyway. Um, so, hey, this one's yours. The one you sent me. Is it? <sighs> yeah, you wanted to do that. Remember that one? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I was going to give him a show high five. Yes. yes. Moonshine Yes. yes. Oh, hey. hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Hang on. Oh, yeah. I've already had one. <laughs> give me give me one. Give She's me. on camera. But, th- but, then, but then, hey, is she? Oh, yeah, she is. Hey, push them together. There you go. Hang on. Wait. Come here. Come here. Don't go anywhere yet. <laughs> what am I hearing? Crunch, crunch. No. What do you want from me? I want that jar. Somebody got to play right. Oh, here we go. Uh, Yeah. Now we're on. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. We call that show prep. We call that show prep. Look, Myron's big ass in the damn picture. That's how fucked up shit is right now. Technology wins again. Oh, yeah. I don't even want to look at that. Yeah. Hey, our stream looks good over here. Does it? Yeah. Is it even on? Yeah. All right. Good. Something's working right. All right. So, what's your uh, high five? What's your show high five? My high five. Here it is. Man caught driving a stolen car filled with radioactive uranium, a rattlesnake, whiskey, and this is all by the Guthrie police of our greatest neighbor. The reason that Texas stays out of the Gulf of Mexico, Oklahoma sucks. Because Oklahoma sucks. <clears throat> Dude, yeah, he's pulled over. I don't remember what he was doing, but he has all this shit in the car. And uh, Mark is staring at us. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Where are you going, birthday boy? There he is. Birthday boy. Come on now. Where you at? Is he on? We got him. Yeah, he's there. Happy birthday, brother. (laughs) Thank you for having us. Happy birthday, my friend. Here, have a pickle. No. No? You scared? I think it's you. No. That's what I'm hearing. You need to mute your computer. Mute my computer? Yeah. I can hear the feed from the video you're watching. How come I can't? I can hear it through my headphones. All right, I'm working on it. Bam, there we go. Done. Anyway, so if I had my readers on, I could read the story to you. Uh, Guthrie Police. Oh, man, you are an asshole. Hey, man, Myron hooked us up. Made me, made me look old. Don't, don't laugh. You're don't laugh. Me. I'm only 28. Guthrie police had quite a surprise when they pulled over a car with an expired tag. Car turned out to be stolen. Uh, Police said they found a canister of radioactive uranium, a rattlesnake, and an open bottle of Kentucky Deluxe whiskey. You know he's high class, baby. He's drinking that Kentucky Kentucky Deluxe. Deluxe. Yes, sir. Whiskey. Yes, sir. According to Guthrie police, an author was patrol. uh, The officer was patrolling. The area on the 300 block of Viking Drive on June 25th 
When he noticed the car with an expired tag, the officer pulled over the car and spoke with the driver, later identified as 41-year-old Stephen Jennings. Stephen Jennings, I just made you famous, sir. Police said Jennings' driver's license was suspended. The car he was driving had been reported stolen. He reportedly told officers that he had a firearm in the center console, and there was a timber rattlesnake in the aquarium in the back seat. <laughs> oh, it was in an aquarium. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Officers said they searched the car and found the gun was almost full in, a, in an almost full bottle of open Kentucky Deluxe whiskey. Jennings said his passenger was placed in police custody, and uh, the silver canister containing the yellow powdery substance was also found inside the car. The canister advised that the uh, yellow, uh, what the hell does that say? The canister advised that the yellow uh, in color powdery substance was uranium. Crews from the Emergency Medical Institute responded and verified that the substance was a radioactive material. Police said that uh, they took possession of the substance for safekeeping. Jennings has been charged with a felony count of possession of a stolen vehicle and misdemeanor counts of transporting an open container of liquor, which is the least of his worries. Of course. Operating a motor vehicle with his suspended license, another pretty easy get by. Right. And failure to carry secure verification form. His passenger, Rachel Rivera, boy, she didn't know what kind of date she was getting into is charged with the possession of a firearm and uh, has a former felony conviction. So, that yes. That's on top of things, man. Yes. Yes, he, uh <laughs> They all need a show high five. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Anyway, next. Next. Do you want to talk uh, about Gerber's picks or you want to do Twitter? Let's go with Twitter. Almost got it. So, Twitter is not a segment about uh, the social media network. Twitter is an acronym. It stands for This Week in Texas Rangers. And we update their week, their previous week. We talk about, especially going into the trade deadline, July 31st, right around the corner. And it seems uh, not more than just even two weeks ago, we were all – Bye, bye, bye. We got a shot yeah, at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are four yeah, games yeah. back. We are 10 games over 500. Uh, we are in the second wild card spot. Uh, we were only, I don't know, what, four game, four and a half games behind uh, Houston for the lead in the AL West. At the time, where are we at now? <sighs> boom, 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 boom. Wow. Oosh. The Rangers are 50 and 47. They're three and seven in their last ten. They're still above five. They're still above five hundred. Three games over five hundred. Anybody here expect the Rangers to be above five hundred no. at any point this year? No, nobody. Hell no. But they haven't just lost three of their last ten. They have been the victims of was it three major ass whoopings, including a nineteen to four loss at home against the hated. Arizona Rattlers or Diamondbacks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, oh, hell. Dude, dude, they're not. That hurt my ear. Mike Miner is not playing well, and there's speculation that he is tanking intentionally so that he is not traded. Really? Would a professional athlete really do that? No. I don't think so either. He not, might be a little <laughs> fucked up in the head. I'm not even man worth the salt anyway. He might be a little fucked up in the head There's just because of the trade talk. He has never, by the way, in his career been the subject of a – oh, I didn't know we could do that uh, – of a midseason trade. He has children. He has a wife. They're in school. You don't need that. That's fine. Um, so I'm sure when they discuss him in terms of the midseason trade, it's, it's fucking with his head. Uh, so that's probably affecting his performance a little bit. But our little Rangers are not doing well, Big Red, and uh, they are currently third in the AL West. They're five and a half games behind Oakland for the second wild card spot, six games behind Cleveland for the first wild card spot, and they are 11 games in back of Houston for the division. Guess so what? Guess things what? are not going well. Seller, seller, seller. Yeah, sell, sell, sell. They are fading fast, and it is going to make John Daniels' decision 
so easy in the upcoming week and a half or so. Is John uh, is John Daniel still your GM of the future? Even though, yeah. if, if, even after your rant, even do if, you remember how drunk I was during that rant? It was still a rant, son. It was still a rant, and I was still there, and I still heard it, and it's still so recorded my, out there on the interweb. No, we took it down. Go ahead. Somebody has somebody it. Somebody has it. I still have it. So, yes, I went on a rant uh, earlier in the podcast season about John Daniels sucking. I disappeared. And what the hell was he doing? And uh, it got us fired from a gig. <laughs> it did. It did. Yeah. <laughs> between, yeah, between the. Uh, it was the, my uh, birthday episode. The, the rant and the drunkenness. Yeah, we're oh, so drunk. We can't. We, can't we weren't the there. drunk sports podcast that night. We were the drunkest sports podcast. We were the podcast. drunkest sports podcast <laughs> ever yeah, yeah, of all time. Yeah. So, no, I do believe John Daniels is here. I mean, I mean he's only. We're amongst friends. We, we currently have the largest group of people that have ever heard this show at one time in front of us. So right. We, we can be on. These what are there, our friends. What is there, 12 of us? I mean, well, uh, 11 and a half. I mean, there may be a couple of kids. By the way, this piece is badass. I had a, it is. I had a piece of it while you were doing yeah, your. Go ahead, eat that too. Doing your bit over there, um, <laughs> but yes, the Rangers will be sellers. This is a really good crust. I love fired pizza like this. Um, you're supposed to talk while I'm oh, eating. Oh, Emma, I'm sorry. I'm drinking while you're eating. Worst <laughs> show of all time. <laughs> we need a uh, we need a break. We need a segment break. Man, we should have done that earlier. <laughs> yeah, we should have. Um, but so along like everything else, not everything is working at the right no, time. No, nothing's working. It never does for us. We nope. suck. Trying so hard to be a professional broadcaster again, and life keeps getting in the way. Mm, yeah. So let's talk so about Mr. John Gerber's picks from Wednesday. Let's do it. You got the sheet underneath your sheet. Underneath this sheet. Bam. Ryan Palmer. He was the. Uh, Is he the bologna sandwich? He was the bologna sandwich. Yep. Yes. He missed the cut. Yep, tied for 128th, uh, missed the cut after Friday. Yep, Brandon Grace was the uh, ham sandwich. Was the ham sandwich? Yep, he made the cut, but he is currently at uh, tied for 61st, at three over. Then we have the uh, the money makers, Ricky Fowler and Johnny and I had lunch the other day, and his deal with Ricky is that hit. Our deal about Ricky. I'm not going to put Johnny on the spot about this. Because I've put some money on, on Ricky in the past. And until Ricky changes how he plays golf, a major's going to fall in his lap. So, uh, oh, hell. I give up. <laughs> well, as long as it's recording, we're good, right? Yeah. So, uh, but then we got uh, Patrick Reed. Tied for 19th at minus four. Yep. Uh, Johnny still thinks he's got a good chance. I don't know after Cost after me today. Twenty five bucks. I mean, twenty five bottle caps. I don't know after today if uh, if, if that's going to happen. But uh, then Dustin Johnson tied for 29th at minus two, and uh, Matty Kuchar tied for 12th at minus six. So well, I mean, we still got some. We, we still got a chance. Had I had I been able to get hold of my guy that was in Vegas to to make my make my bets, I was going to make all those guys at least uh, top ten picks, and we'd oh, had yeah. some, we'd had something to look forward to. Oh yeah, that would have been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. All right. So John's picks are doing well. Johnny always does well. Um, mine, as we discussed, not as well. But you know what? I'm an amateur. Johnny's a professional. He does this all the time. And I still hold st I still stand by my pick of Webb Simpson. I still think John Daly has a chance in this British Open. John Daly is not even playing in the damn British Open. Well, side. then you know what? He won't finish last, will he? Well, yeah, because he wasn't in it. But he won't finish last. Well, By the way. It won't be in the books. I forgot about last. a show hug that we need to give uh, to one Rory McElroy. Oh, little Rory shot a shot a sixty one as a sixteen year old as a six as a sixteen year old, and then failed to make the cut. But, but in his defense, not even really in his defense. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go another direction. 
Shane Lowry, another Irishman. Today, the man shot a course record and is leading the Open by four strokes. What did he shoot today? Uh, what was it, babe? You told me. What did uh, Shane Lowry shoot today? 63, 63, 60. Yeah, like 60. How is that a course record? Well, it, it's not a course record for it. Course record for poor rep on in the open. Oh, okay. Got gotcha. his open record. Open record at that at that venue, but Rory still holds the course record as a 16 year old. But there is an Irishman, which is cool. Right. Right. An Irishman now leads the Open Championship in Northern Ireland by four strokes. And uh, what up, Big Ed? <laughs> and uh, so, it, yes, do I do I want an American win to win? Yes, I do. I I want an American to win the golf tournament always. But whenever a golf tournament has been an open or a major has been away from a part of the country for close to 70 years. Yep. And you have the Irishmen that are in the field to have an Irishman now leading the tournament by plus four. It's good I for will, golf. I will be, I will be on, uh, on Shane Lowry's. I will be in his saddle. Yeah. Tomorrow rooting for him. It's good for golf. Yes, Absolutely. Good for the open. Well, I may be playing golf tomorrow, but I'm going to be. No, it's not Stacey. Dinner. Well, I mean, Stacey can go to where, do whatever she wants to. I mean. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Maybe Stacey will be hanging out at Tim's house. Making another. Hey, come hang out in the pool with us. <laughs> Baby daddy. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Yep. Shit's going to get deep. So, we'll the British Open, up. we're looking for an exciting finish tomorrow. Um, things get Kicked off, teed off, whatever. Pretty early, like one in the morning here. They have coverage on TV at one in the morning. Yes, they do. Yep, on yep. Golf Channel. To be on the Golf Channel, then then move over to uh, the NBC. NBC. Hey, hello. <whistles> How you doing? <laughs> All right. So British Open tomorrow. Um, short shots. Whoosh. I made my own sound effect. Dude, that is all. That's awful. Whoosh. <laughs> it's literally my voice. Yeah, I know. It, oh, you can't, you can tell? Yeah. It's, it's that bad? Because I'm, I'm staring at you, but it's still, Whoosh. it's still awful. Whoosh. Is it that bad? Absolutely. 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 I mean, Damn it. I do the same shit. I mean. All right, still looking for sound effects to separate our segments. We're all drunk. Man, we're there so much. Absolutely. So, Lance, the 17th of this past week was National Hot Dog Day. Were you aware of that? Uh, I, believe, I believe I did hear that on the, uh, on the show, uh, G-Bag Nation. Yeah, I believe Jeff brought it up. Yep, yep, Mr. Kavanaugh. So he did a list of the Shake top him. Push ten. Him, push them together if you're going to be on. Go ahead. He did a list of his. Or he got it. I forgot where he got it from Food Network or some bullshit website about the top ten hot dog toppings. And it was a travesty. It had, like, beans on it. It had, and you know what? Those might be viable toppings. I get it. But they don't belong in the top ten. Pineapple hey, was on, on his list. Hang, hang, wait, 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 wait. For a hot dog Do topping. you believe a Chicago dog is a real hot dog? I mean, they got. Absolutely. Why? Because it's amazing. Dude. I love Whoa. a hot dog, Chicago dog. Quit. Go ahead. Move on. So I did not like the list that he came up with, or that he found that he <laughs> we norm- read online. We normally don't agree with Mr. No. Kavanaugh anyway. No. So I power ranked the the hot dog toppings. My top ten hot dog toppings. Weenie. A weenie is always My on a hot 10 dog. Weenie toppings. Hey, slow your roll. Here we go. Slow your roll. It's, a weenie We're is always drunk. on a hot dog. <laughs> So I'm going to start at number 10, and you tell me what you think of my top 10 list. And there's other things that could Give be on here, but 10. these are my Give top 10. 10. Push, push. Coming in at number 10 that a lot of you might rank a little higher is ketchup. What? Ketchup is number 10. That's sacrilegious, man. 
Ketchup just barely belongs on a hot dog. You don't put ketchup on a hot dog. You don't put ketchup on a hamburger. You don't. I'm you just kind of right there with you. However, yeah, but because you of put its it popularity, on your list. it's not. Dude. I was swayed by by public opinion. What, Zach's? Everybody likes ketchup on a hot dog. Your kids? Not me. Your kids? Of course. What? Since when do you care about what your kids? Dude, think? I got a child that eats ketchup on a steak. Ketchup is a big player in the ham Dude, house. I will bury that kid in my backyard if well, you ever put your ketchup. favorite. Oh. Yep. Now, how do you feel about that? Okay, maybe we give her a pass. Maybe we give her a pass. Coming but, in at number nine. <laughs> not on my stick. You don't put ketchup on my stick. In the top ten hot dog toppings, power ranked by me for National Hot Dog Day 2019, is salsa slash pico de gallo. I'll take that. I'll do that. That's fine. That's fine. I, I didn't want to separate the two because they're kind of no, interchangeable. They're, they're, it's, they're, I do they're, love pico. They're one, we need to get clips for these damn cords because this, I know, mine's is, bugging this, me this too. is bothering me. Number eight. Tomatoes. What? No, dude. Eight and that now nine, they go together. You should get rid of that. Different. Because now you're talking about a Chicago dog. Yep. Tomatoes. No. Oh, yeah. With the bull. With the, no. Hey, but you know what's not in my list but is no. under honorable mention? Pickles. Well, I mean, it's relish. No. No, 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 no. no. I'm talking Pickle. about a pickle spear. Pickles and relish are one and the same, son. They're not. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Oh, think God. Of, think of, we're going to argue about this? Relish is not the same as a pickle. Yes, it is. This You call this relish? It could be. You, but it's not. If I chop that pickle up into little bitty ass pieces. And there's other be, stuff with it. No. Relish. Then it's is, relish. <laughs> <sighs> Number seven. What happened? On my power was, ranked list. I got drunk in the middle of, the of a damn podcast. the top ten hot dog toppings. And couldn't finish it. That was me. Last Sunday. <laughs> Poor Mr. Fisher. Huh? Absolutely. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven is bacon. Yes. Bacon. Put put bacon put bacon on my hot dog all the time. Bacon on a hot dog. Stacy puts bacon on my hot dog all the time. Number six. Just and a wraps, lot of people just, think this is gonna just be wraps it around this it. should be higher. Number six is cheese. Yes. Yeah. Dude, you can't have a hot dog with that. Got to have cheese on the hot dog. Yeah. Yes. Number five, onions. Yes. Yes. They can be grilled. They can be raw. But Mark, it may be. One or the other. Pool, it may be your birthday, but fuck off. Number four in my top ten power ranked hot dog toppings for National Hot Dog Day 2019, sauerkraut. You, I, what, what, hang on, hang on, hang on. What? I will agree with that because my daughter loves kraut on her dog. Uh, especially. Are we about to have fireworks? Especially. Uh, uh, hey, you know what? I'm going to tell you what. Here's, here's what's going to happen. You're going to do those, and you're going to send my dog into a panic attack. Hey, somebody, somebody just run down and give my, give my dog some, some weed treats to calm her down before weed that treats. shit happens. Wait, Dude. if anybody's got weed treats, we need to know about it now. Hey, hey, hey baby, go down there and. Bring Tim a couple of weed treats for the dogs. Give he'll Tim eat. a couple of weed treats for the dogs. Yeah, uh, he'll eat them. Oh, yeah. It's on the show. I will. We'll do anything for a buck. Well, hey, we just drank freaking moonshine pickle juice. I would Number drink a whole three, other jar. On my top ten hot dog list, relish. D- Wait, you just did that twice. No, I said pickles was under honorable mention. <laughs> Relish is the same. No, nope. sh- nope. hang on. Wait, I disagree. Nope. Here, look. Go to Google and say is relish the same as pickles and see what it says. Here's the deal. Relish is nothing but finely chopped pickles. Whether you do sweet mixed rel- with other stuff. No, there is nothing else in, dude. That's like saying guacamole <sighs> is nothing but avocado. No, no, that's different. That's different. Relish, relish is nothing but. Finely chopped pickles, whether it be sweet pickles or dill pickles. You got sweet relish, you got dill relish. The only difference. You said dill. Dill. <laughs> Number that's, two. That's a really long drop, and that's going to go Number, on Number, let me talk over it. Number two, chili. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Chili is my number two power ranked hot dog topping, so that can leave. Everybody loves Big Red's chili. Everybody knows what number one is because it's the only thing I haven't mentioned that everybody has to have on a freaking hot dog. And if you don't put it on a hot dog, you're not American. It goes on a burger. It if goes you're on offended, hot dogs. If you're offended, I'll help you pack. When I was a kid, I used to dip my chicken nuggets in it. And I'm talking mustard. Uh, not honey mustard. No. Mustard. Yellow ass mustard. Yes. Those are my top ten power ring hot dog, hot dog <laughs> toppings for 2019's National Hot Dog Day. Thank you, IndyCar Tim, for that enlightenment. So, Lance. Whoosh. You're going to hate this next segment or this next topic I got for short shots. Oh, hell. Why? Oh, you're going to hate it. Get ready for a Lance <laughs> rant, everybody. It's about to happen. Hey. Buckle up, kids. It's supposed to get hot. So Lance's favorite state in the union, and the people he loves the most live in California. Not sure if y'all know that or not. We need a really big earthquake. Lance is a big fan of the liberals out in California. I've got, I've got, I've got some friends that live out there, and they need to move, and then we need a really big earthquake. And we let don't, that shit just fall off in the goddamn We don't get into politics Pacific. too much here, and we're not going to get into politics now. Nope. Go Trump. Uh, but. 2020, baby. So keep keep possibly, America great. Keep America great. Quite possibly the most liberal city in the entire fucking world, Berkeley, California. <laughs> Dateline, Berkeley, California. Oh, God. No go. more manholes in Berkeley as city rights gender out of its codes. Yeah, I, I, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. I heard about this. I read something about this. There is no longer any kind of gender differentiation on anything in Berkeley. You can't be not like a not like a men's room. Just in their city codes, in their like, city codes. Not like a not like a not like a men's room. Yeah. Not like a women's yeah. room. Yes, I mean it's just 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 go where you want to go. Hey, yeah, hey, hey. There's a chick pissing in the damn stall. I'm gonna go to. Hey, hey I think I think today bit, I would baby. like to identify drop trowel. as a 28 year old male. No, you can't. Not, not in Berkeley. Because so, you can't be a male. There is no more policemen in Berkeley. They are simply police officers. Oh, bullshit. There is nothing in Berkeley that is man-made. It is Back now, to blue or stop following us. It is now human-made. And quite possibly the strangest thing, <sighs> the strangest thing I've ever heard in my entire life is they no longer call them manhole covers. They call them maintenance hole covers. That's, dude, no, I just, I can't. What the hell, dude? I can't. I can't. I can't. So and, the and city of Berkeley long. You, hey, 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 hang on. I already tried to tell you the kind of day that we had. And my wife tried to warn you the mood that I was in. And now you're bringing this shit up. Really? Mm-hmm. You were. <laughs> we got. That's why. Oh, Jesus Christ. So the city of Berkeley, as everyone knows, has been a bastion of liberal ideas. They voted this week. To purge gender from its law books. Sisters and brothers will be replaced with siblings. He or she will be banished in favor of they, even if referring to one person. I can't. The city council's unanimous decision was meant to send a message about equal chances and representation, said council member. Fuck that. Council woman. Fuck that. Council God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, and none of this other bullshit. We are men and women. Your Get gender has no relevance in whether you can perform work and receive services, Mrs. Drost said. <sighs> Women and non-binary folks are just then as let's entitled get Mrs. Drost on the damn show. to accurate representation. The law would apply to traffic, health, and safety regulations. Regulations? There's the temptionary right that, there. The temptionary. Hey, hey, that's another shot, kids. That's another shot. Tim just brought up a new word. That's a Regulations. shot. The temptionary is back in effect. Garbage collection, environmental rules, construction permits, all of the business of the city. So many times what happens in California makes its way across the country. Did you know California was the first state to ban smoking in restaurants? And now is there anywhere where you can smoke in restaurants? Rich, I mean, uh, Richardson. Occasionally. Addison. Um, so uh, the tailpipe restrictions, emissions, all that shit. Did you know allowing right turns, right turns on red lights started in California? I, I mean, props for that. I don't disagree with that. I'll take it. 
I get tired of sitting in my head. So, Berkeley, California, you suck. We hate you. I'll yeah. let you throw that in the camera. Oh, now you're hitting people. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Stray. That was a stray. Stray bullet. My bad. Lance, the – oh, wait. We have a segment. We got we to gotta switch segments. Whoosh. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> We're all drunk. Whoosh. Is that a fart? <laughs> Whoosh. <laughs> Of course, now the more I listen to that, the more ridiculous it sounds. Man, we've lost everybody. Yeah, I, I believe so. Because we're talking about Berkeley, California. Yeah, nobody uh, here wants to hear about Berkeley, California. The Hall California. of Fame class for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, the speech order and the presenters were announced this week. Uh, yeah. Um, the Chiefs and the Falcons great Tony Gonzalez, uh, in the last year of his eligibility. No. The first year of his eligibility. Oh, sorry. Yeah. He shouldn't be in. He shouldn't? No. Greatest tight end of all time. No. He's not the basketball player at UCLA. He could he should be a basketball player then. But no, but I mean he's the most functional tight end to ever play the game. So Gil Brandt, show friend Gil Brandt, local legend Gil Brandt. The Love late Love great Gil, Gil Brandt, Brandt. As Dion tried to put him in the grave a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, will be presented by Jerry Jones. Johnny Robinson, presented by Bob Thompson, his stepson. Uh, Pat Bolin will go in. Um, with good for the, him. Yes, posthumously, of course. Yep, good for him. Um, be presented by Steve Antonopoulos, a longtime Bron- Broncos employee and trainer. Ty Law will go in by his good friend Byron Washington. Ed Reed will be presented by Ed Reed Sr., his father. That's going to that, be cool. Dude, yeah. That's awesome. very cool. Anytime, anytime you have your dad present you for the Hall of Fame, I mean, yep. and had, if my dad was still around, I might be going to the early high school Hall of Fame. and maybe, He would present you. Maybe my dad could, but. He it, would do it justice. No, he's been dead for. <laughs> and you're probably not going into that Hall of Fame anyway. Probably not so. either. No. Champ Bailey going in uh, from his a, uh, with his agent, Jack Real. Really? Come yep, on. that's kind of a cop out. That's, I think that's kind of gay. That's shit house. And then the non Hall of Fame Hall of Famer Tony Gonzalez will be presented by Dennis Allen, his cousin and best friend. That's cool. I, I so get some that. fun facts about this. This is the fourth time Jerry Jones has served as a presenter. The previous three times for Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith, and Larry Allen. All greats. Antonopoulos will be the second ever trainer to present to the Hall of Fame. I got a new trainer, um, Reggie. Oh, by the way, uh, Kevin Mayway, I think I skipped over him, will be presented by his wife. How's that going to go in a few years when they're divorced? Yeah, baby mama. She is the fifth ever wife to present her husband into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> My wife would present me into the – You were presenting a little bit earlier. I'm into the say in, that. Into the Broadcasting Hall of Fame when that happens. My nice. wife will be there. My wife will be there. All right. Nobody else cares. Nope. That's okay. Whoosh. It's just us. We're good with y'all. That's it's fine. Just us. Whoosh. Whoosh. Give it to me, Lance. Give it to me, Lance. Push. Push. Give it to me, Lance. God, that was loud on the yeah, podcast. It was really loud. Um, all right. So that's it for short shots. I only had three. We're keeping it short. And now we are off to, guess what? Whoosh. Oh, that's why everybody left. Yeah. We're burning down a building. Yeah. Um. It is the White Trash Bash 2019, brother. And you had some very special White Trash things. I've got, I've got a celebrate list. celebrate White I've got Trash a list. Bash. White Trash at their finest. White Trash at Dude, their that's finest. That's the best stuff right there. Are you ready? I'm ready. Show us some White Trash at its white finest. White Trash at their finest. Red. i got an extensive list, and when we get tired, I'll stop. Yeah, you don't have to do all 114 of them if you don't want to. It's not 114. It's like, uh, where'd, where'd it go? Hang on. Come on there. 23. In Marion County, Florida, Patreon Stokes, 26, was arrested for drug possession after being pulled over for speeding in the early hours of the morning when they arrived at the jail. They noticed the money they had found when they pulled the car over was nowhere to be found. Then the police noticed that the money was falling out of his ass. <laughs> Wait, how much money are we talking here? 
$1,090 in 20s and 10s falling out the man's ass. So no quarters or coins, I'm guessing. Well, I mean. If they were shoved up his ass. It may have been rolls of quarters. Well, I, where else are you going to shove money that you're trying to hide from the cops? I, Does he not realize they do a body cavity I search when they arrest I have only been in the back of a cop car once that anybody knows about. Oh, dude, I've been there enough times for the entire show. So, <laughs> did you? Did we get what what I had asked for earlier? What did you ask for? My little sound effect. We get that. We get that. I don't remember. <laughs> no. What did right. you ask for? So we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll move on. Across the pond in England, Jan Shavik, thirty, was wanted for not showing up to a court date for burglary. Officers went to the home in Halifax, West Wark, Yorkshire, almost a three-hour drive from L- North London. They had no idea how easy it would be to find him. He was found under the bed with his legs sticking out. The cops even took a photograph of his legs before they arrested him. Uh, he won't be winning any awards for a hide-and-seek <laughs> championship. <laughs> That's like hiding behind the drapes with yeah, your feet down, hanging out the bottom. Well, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. So, don't whenever if you're ever caught in a hotel room, don't stand behind the curtains with your feet showing. <laughs> right, right. Back on uh, in July, eighteenth, uh, an eighteen-year-old, uh, Kenny, Mr. Sanchez from uh, oh, California, uh, California, was live streaming on. Uh, it's a she was live streaming streaming on her phone which led to a fatal car crash in which her sister died. Damn. Yet she pleads not guilty to all charges, including driving under the influence. An underage underage girl who was drunk while driving felt the need to live stream, and now her baby sister is dead. That seems like a poor decision on her part. Yeah. Don't live stream while you're driving. So is there there any... uh, Hey, guess guess what I did... Yesterday on my way to the Maverick Bar. Oh, you live streamed? I live streamed. Going, I was yeah. not just live streaming while driving. Yeah. I was going the overpass from the tollway to 121. <laughs> you live streamed. I, uh, I yep. saw that. Do I we did. have any CNC Music Factory fans Everybody in the house? Everybody dance now. Boom. That's boom, what you boom, wanted, isn't boom, it? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Damn, I could have done that too. A guy in Canada got pulled over and ended up with a $118 ticket. In September, after a cop saw him scream singing CNC Music Factory, everybody dance now while driving. Greatest song ever. So, oh, what, what the hell was that? Oh, my, my dogs are dying right now. My dogs are dying. Did you give him weed? Did you, did you, you bring have any doggy weed? Did you bring a couple for Tim? Why not? He'd have done them. Yeah, fireworks make oh. me nervous too. In January, we heard of a guy in upstate New York who got busted for drunk driving and bought 1,000 copies of his local newspaper so that no one would ever find out about it. But then the story went viral and everybody found out. I was going to say, what about the internet? The story went viral and everybody found out anyway. White trash idiot. Yep. 31-year-old toothless woman in Florida. Wow. How many of those are there? How many, how many toothless women at the age of, in their 30s are, are toothless? How many stories start with a w- toothless woman in Florida? <laughs> a 31-year-old toothless woman <laughs> in Florida was busted for stealing a car in January. You know why she got busted? Afraid to ask. <laughs> she was busted for stealing the car because they found her fucking dentures in there. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. They found her dentures in the old. car. Yeah, 31 years old. In February, some idiot wanted to make some uh, quick money in the stock market by bombing a bunch of Target stores. He thought their stock would plummet from all the bad press. He then bought a bunch to sell it as profit. But luckily, the guy he hired to plant the bombs went to the cops. Damn. Yeah. Disaster averted. Yeah. Disaster averted. What an idiot. All these guys need show hugs. Yeah. Well, no, they don't. 
Also, for the second year in a row, someone got pulled over while driving 88 miles an hour oh, in, a Delor- in a DeLorean. Marty McFly. In a DeLorean. The speed had hit to be the back in the future. I mean, really. I mean, that happens a lot. People still try to do that shit? I would. They got an influx capacitor or whatever the fuck If I had called. access to DeLorean right now, I would do 88 miles an hour. And I would live stream it while I was doing so. Somebody find us a flux capacitor. We will drive 88 miles an hour in a DeLorean right now. I'm really? in. All right, so we're good. One more. One more. Let's do, let's find this one. How about a uh, 38-year-old guy in our lovely state of California recently stole 300, a $300,000 Ferrari. He then got caught a few weeks ago in... He asked people for gas money, and they realized the car probably did not belong to him. <laughs> so, I mean, just another idiot. Dumb crime, stupid criminals. This may be a – we may pimp this a little bit more. This It's just something – This is funny, man. I like this. Trying new at the white trash bash. We got yeah. All we these got, idiots are white trash. What? Absolutely. No, not idiots here. We're talking about the idiots in the stories. But they're idiots here, too. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying that. I, mean, I don't know them. They, you do. I do, they, and they're not listening to me, so, yeah, they're all idiots. <laughs> Fuck them. Next. What's Very next? Nice. Whoosh. Absolutely. We're Lance, are drunk. you aware, Big Red, there are 30 Major League Baseball teams in the majors, and they all have very unique, specific logos to identify themselves. And they do, and a, a very big show friend of ours has already commented on this before we even brought this up. Oh, has he? Yes. The ball and glove. <laughs> Who? The ball and glove from the Brewers, he says, is the greatest Who said major that? league logo of all time. All right, it's I like it. Kitchen boy, it's oh, God. It's my boy on you. I'm not sure his opinion is valid. His opinion is very valid. Well, did you know it's not just a ball and glove? He probably doesn't even know that it's it's an M and a B. I'm sure he does. I bet he doesn't. I bet he does. Or he would have said it. It's still the ball and the glove. So we're gonna power rank. The MLB logos from worst to first. This is from NBC, NBC Sports in Washington, D.C. And I have to say, I kind of agree with the entire list. Like, there wasn't a lot that I thought was out of place. Um, so we'll blow through the first few. Um, the, the first eight, according to Washington Sports, NBC Sports in Washington, these are eight logos that have to go. Uh, number 30, the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah, it's, gotta, it's, it's, too, it's too new school. I don't like it. It's got to go. Uh, they say the A is bulky and blocky. It feels like it belongs in front of a Canadian football league team. Dude. More than it does on Zach Granke's head. There's, there's, not a, there's not a Canadian football team that's got somebody that big and blocky to fucking block. For. No. Number 29, the Miami Marlins. The worst franchise in major league like the history. Marlins Stadium, the logo is too big and simply has too much going on, and nothing there to watch them nope. play. Number twenty-eight, the Cincinnati Reds. Why is the C on the Reds cap so incredibly close to being an O? We know but, they don't no. exactly have a mascot made for the front of a hat, but it doesn't explain why they don't agree. Decided on don't a strange-looking and claustrophobic letter. To rock the game. This this overhaul this, is this one I do I do not agree with. Number twenty seven, the Cleveland Indians. Are we gonna talk about Wahoo McDaniel? Ohio isn't home to just one badly made C. However, the Indians could use some serious help. Playing it safe, keeping things or- ordinary as the little C is not often a strategy that works, and it doesn't work here. Is that really their their the C? Yeah, they're talking about the little generic C. It's not really their logo. They don't use though. Chief Wahoo anymore. Chief Wahoo is the greatest. It, well, it's I've, dead. Chief Wahoo is dead. He's been taken then, from us. Then they're idiots. Because one. Of the I agree. I love Chief single Wahoo. Single greatest movies ever that I watch every Major year. League. Every year before baseball, because I used to watch it with my cousin Ron. Major League, and we would sit and recite. 
damn near every line of the movie. I could do that entire movie right yes, now. Yes, we, we could. It's the greatest movie ever. Ron Number 26, the Seattle Mariners. Seattle puts a compass on top of the S, but they'd be better served taking it off and using it to point themselves in a better direction when it comes to logos. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, they made a joke. Maybe Seattle will fall off in the damn ocean. They tried to be creative, Pacific, but whatever. it didn't California work. does. Number 25, the Colorado Rockies. No, the Rockies I, logo, go ahead. That's the Crown Royal logo, almost. It says the Colorado Rockies logo should be about 100 times cooler than it is. Throw in some sweet mountains or a flying baseball or something. No, Colorado, no. anything other than no. uh, what they have would be a huge improvement. Plus, <laughs> that was, that was the, that's the one cap that I've ever bought for an just expansion to see in the team. Arm. Just to see in nah, the see, I never did like it. I never liked it. I, like I want to be a Rockies fan because I, like I love it. Colorado, but I hate their colors and I hate their logo. Number 24, the Houston you Disastros. You got a problem with purple? Yeah, on a baseball uniform, I do. The Houston Astros, another relatively new idea that would have been better off in a computer's recycling bin. Houston's logo feels like that of a fast food chain more so than it does a Major League Baseball team. No. Number 23, and this is the last one of the eight that have to go, the New York Mets. The patch on the Mets sport on their shoulders. The patch that the Mets sport on their shoulders. God, I can't read. I'm drunk. Give it we're to all me. Drunk. Give it to me. We're all. Give it to me. We're all. Would make for a nice look on their hats as well. Far nicer than what they currently have. So the next six we have are logos that are just plain boring. Okay. The other eight had to go. These are just boring. The Atlanta Braves. I will be the judge of this. No, that I, I don't know. That's boring. It's the. A, we talking about the A. Boring is better than ugly. Yes, but these logos, starting with the Braves. Aren't good. A splash of color even would make the straightforward cursive A's it's a little cl- more appealing to it's the eyes. It's classic, dude. It's classic. Yeah, I don't have so much of a problem with it, but I think 22 is probably where it needs to be. Number 21, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Classic. It's no New Times Roman, but that P is about as snoozeworthy as it gets for a logo. Hey, you know what? It's better than the damn uh, black and yellow striped shit they used to wear. The absence of a swashbuckling pirate on Pittsburgh's hat is inexcusable. Right. I kind of agree. Number 20, the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies check in one spot ahead of the Pirates only because they have a font that is somewhat interesting. But even with that, it fails. No, I mean, they got the, they got the Philly Fanatic, too. I mean, that also, all that shit They're plays together. talking about their cap logos. I These understand that, logos. but that, 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 that P is pretty sweet. And they're paying, they're paying the dude a lot of money to play baseball. Chris Bryant. Number Wrong. 19, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. I'm sorry, the Tampa Bay Rays. The team that's so new, they still couldn't decide on a name. The logo looks like it took about four minutes to make from start to finish on Microsoft Paint. So they came out the same year that uh, the Colorado Rockies did. And their original logo was a Devil Ray. Right. And everybody got offended by that. Of course, the pussification of America continues because nobody wants to hear the word devil. And now they're just the race. And And the logo sucks. Yeah. Does it suck? Yes. But I chose Colorado Rockies over the devil, over, over the over the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Number eighteen, the Kansas City Royals. No, hell, no, I didn't want to hear about this. No, similar no. to the Braves. Am I, am I a fan? Am I a fan of the fan of the you Royals? Like their logo, though. I spent some time as a kid there. We had some season tickets while I was there. I went to the games. Loved George Brett. That's where I became a Royals fan. That is a great logo. Fuck your list. Well, I didn't make it. Well, I mean, just, yeah. The list Number 17, reading. the Chicago Cubs. Nope. Sorry, Chicago. An argument can be made that a traditional logo like this is one that shouldn't be. I am not a fan of the uh, bandwagoning Cubs fans that nope. are out there. Those of us, out there. Those of us that have, have been Cubs fans for some time because – all we could get to watch baseball every day was WGN, WGN. and we watched uh, we watched the the White Sox and the Cubs. Yep, those are the those of us that don't live in Chicago, that are Chicago you Cubs, Cubs fans, fans. Are it's because of that. I don't and mind the Cubs at all. No, not at all. No, no. Um, and I love the little C in the bear. That's, those are the six ass. logos that are just plain boring. We're moving into the next that are six logos that aren't great but still good. So we're getting into the good ones. 
We're at number 16, so we're almost in the top half. All uh, right. Here we go. Number 16, the Detroit Tigers. Hold your breath. Hey, you know what? The Rangers are in the top half of something. Bells. Yeah, and it ain't the standings. <clears throat> the calligraphic D is nice to flow. It's unlike any other in baseball. Not using a Tiger-based design was somewhat a risky decision, but the team pulls this off well. It's just because it's straight classic. I do. I like it. Number yes, 15, the Chicago White Sox. Yep. The diagonal and socks produces a pretty pleasant effect, and it's about as good as a logo can be for a team with a mascot that's a piece of laundry. Love their logo, even though they fucked themselves out of a World Series. 1919. The really going back to 100 years ago? Maybe. All right. Hey, we're the Drunk Sports Podcast. I'm that, I'm that old. Number 14, the Milwaukee Brewers, Arnie. Dude, see it's there. I like it. I told you I liked it. It's a, it's a great logo. I like him. The dude. The dude has a pair of shorts <laughs> now with that logo all over them. I bet he does. And they're it's probably boxer pretty shorts. fucking sweet. No, they're regular. Uh, because that's what they do. Golf shorts. Up there. I know he's not up there, but over there. That's, they wear their underwear outside. He's from there, and he can I do know. whatever the hell he wants to. Uh, if he wants to do that, that's his decision. I mean. Maybe he needs to move to California. Number 13, the San Diego Padres. I will Padres. not allow my friend to fall off into the ocean whenever I detonate. How do you feel about the Padres? The pods. Uh, which, which, which logo are we talking about? The Padres haven't done a lot of things right recently, but the logo's successful. The SD overlap is quite smooth, and while it's not a design that blows anyone's mind, it's simple and it's sharp. But you know what? The SD is cool. The better logo that they have is the, uh, is the, the, the Monk logo. Yeah. No, I agree. That I one, like that one a lot. Is that one, alternate? That one's badass. Number 12, the San Francisco Giants. Fuck the Giants. Fall off in the ocean. Another Next. NLS team that likes to interlock its letters. They beat us they, dude, they, they beat us in the damn World Series. I don't want to hear about it. Move on. Number 11, the Oakland A's. <sighs> okay. It's so. not quite a leap, but the A's are definitely doing something right with this look. The font is slick, and it shows up well on all their hats. The next step, adding just, some yellow trim around the letters. And we're just talking about that. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind that at all. So guess what that, that means? Like we that. have not heard of our Texas Rangers yet. Woo-hoo, baby, we in the top ten of and somebody. And we are in the top ten. Wow. Yeah. Number ten, the Boston Red Sox. Great cap. Great cap. Um, the best of the best starts off with Boston's famous B. It's timeless, and you get the feeling it could yep. last for another 100 years. I had uh, lived in Saginaw and uh, had a stepson that went to Boswell High School. I was a summer coach for them, and that was our B. It's badass. Number Love nine, it. the Minnesota Twins. The Twinkies. Minnesota's yeah, Minnesota's logo is yeah, underrated. The two-color look was a very smart thing to I'm do. Good with that. Executed to perfection. The way the C wraps around the T is quite clever. Yeah, I'm good with that. Number eight, the Texas Rangers. Bam! We made the top ten something this year, baby. The Texas T does not mess around. It's bold and it's declarative. It has some slight red trim that assists in coming across that way. Here's an example of a team just nailing a simple logo. Simple. Simple. Number nine, the Washington Nationals. Used to be the Texas Rangers. No, they used to be the Montreal Expos. Well, no, I mean the... Mon- well, the first Washington Senators right. are now the Minnesota Saint. Twins. And then the expansion oh, Washington God. Senators Dude, are now the gonna, Texas Rangers. You're going to give me a headache. I'm going to get a headache. Okay, here's some baseball history. I've, I've, 1903 to 1960, the Washington Senators moved, in 1960 moved to Minnesota to become the Twins. Washington got an expansion team in 61, moved to Texas in 73. And who was the, the first coach? Of the Rangers? Yeah. You really think I don't know that? I'm just throwing it out there. Ted. Teddy ball game. Uh, number six, the St. Louis Cardinals, and I know you're going to hate them because they beat the Rangers in the World Series. Yeah, fuck them too. Next. Number five, Los Angeles Angels. The halo that wraps around the A is an ingenious that, touch. That yes, that is a a, a cool. But, but hang on, hang on. Is the is the A for Angels? Is the A for Anaheim. the baseball club of Anaheim? Jeez, the longest owned name by Disney. History. Maybe it's here somewhere. Of I California. don't know where else I'm going. So, I mean, it, it, I mean, it could be anything. You couldn't do that with a boom mic, could you? No, I couldn't. Dude, <laughs> these headsets we have now, 
are the Number shit. four, the Los Angeles Dodgers. No, classic. Classic. Yep. Can't go wrong with no, the L.A. Classic. Hey, hey, R.J. not choppy. R.J. not choppy. We love you, brother. Do that we? is a... Uh, do we? Yes, we do. Okay, good. Fuck yeah, we do. So, number three is going to be probably who everybody thought was number one. And we're talking the New York Yankees. Classic. I got no, got no problem nope. with that either. Number two. Oh, yeah. Oh. Happy birthday time. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, let's one, do it. One more. Okay. One more. One more. No. One more. One more. One more. Two more. No. Oh, are you wanting to wait? No, come on. Come on. Come on over here. What the fuck have you got? Dude. I'm going to fucking slap you in the <laughs> slap nuts. Hey, everybody. Everybody, let's sing happy birthday to the birthday boy at the White Trash Bash. Everybody, one, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to the boys. Happy birthday to Mark's little boys. Happy birthday to them. And <laughs> love you, man. Hey, thank you so much for having us out. We love you. Dude, man, thank this is badass. Happy, happy 28th to you. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> and to wrap things up. Number two and number one are interchangeable. Give it to me. Number two. Give it to me, Tim. Baltimore Give Orioles. Give it to me, Tim. Number one, the Toronto Blue Jays. Baltimore Orioles. Yes. The, the bird. The I'm, birds. I'm, I'm cool with that. Yep. Number two and one are interchangeable. There's just something about the Blue Jay. It feels retro and cutting edge at the same the time. The Blue Jays? Blue Jays are number one. Fuck the goddamn Blue you Jays, You said dude. you liked them. Like no, four I, seconds no, ago. I said the Orioles. I'm, I'm good two. with the Orioles. They're number two. I like them both. I don't like the team of the Blue Rugi, Jays. I like their logo. Rugi, punch somebody else All in the right. damn mouth. We are the Drunk Sports Podcast. I am IndyCar Tim. He is Big Red. That is a show. We're going to wrap things up tonight. We want to say happy birthday again to Mark. <laughs> happy we want to thank brother. everybody for being here and putting up with us and listening to us. And Kyle and Terry yes, in Idaho. Kyle and Terry in Idaho that hey, are watching. Hey, we need you to be back here for the next race. I don't care if we go to the race or not. Y'all need to be here. We can party here. I'll smoke some meat. We'll hang out. We'll have fun. He I said miss smoke you. meat. I miss y'all. Please come back. Bells. And, All right, Lance. And, Mark, hey, cover your balls up, son. That's that's, that's disturbing right in hey, my face. Hey, can I borrow those later? <sighs> Lance, take us out of here, brother. Once again, as always, we love y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining uh, please like, share, do all the things that, that you do. But always remember, if you ever wake up and you're fighting the demons and you need somebody to help you, I am here. Look me up. Find me. You have my email address. You have my Twitter handle. Look me up. I will. I'm not going to give you my phone number on the air because Tim will probably try to slide that in on you. But I'm always here. I will find you. You find me. I will talk to you. We will work through it. You are not in this war alone. I love you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Peace out. We're Thank done. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Drunk Sports Podcast. Join us next time for a lot more alcohol and more drunk sports talk with Lance and Tim. Until next time, here's to you. We're all drunk. This is the funnest night ever. <laughs> <laughs> My God, that's it. Surprise, I'm here. Absolutely.